you're going to do a load test of a Generac 22 kilowatt whole house generator. Many people who install these, who have exercise programs built into it, think that the generator just needs to come on once a week, once every two weeks, and that is sufficient. The difference between exercising the generator, where it simply just comes on and idles, versus actually putting under a load test, is that we're actually going to have the generator run the entire house. Uh, spring storm season is about to be here before we know it, and I want to make sure that everything is working. So. I encourage those of you who have either the portable generators or even a standalone unit like this that you do a load test every so often. The guys who do my maintenance tell me that they do it every six months when they come out to service the generator, but they recommend that you do it more than that. So I'm going to try to start doing this quarterly as this is a, a brand new generator. For those of you in Austin, uh, this was installed and designed by Austin Generator. You can see them on the web at austingenerator.com. Uh, they are a great group to work with. They did uh, the install and they helped me design this system uh, to make it something that uh, will be helpful to us uh, even when we're not at home. And I'll explain a little bit more about that later. Uh, call Kurt Summers. This is a, uh, he's the owner of the company. It's a family-owned company. He's been in his family for, I think, two generations now. Uh, call and ask for the Paul Martin discount. Now, there's no such thing as a Paul Martin discount, but you never know with Kurt. Just say, hey, I watched a video. Paul Martin said, call you. Maybe you give me a discount, see what happens. I don't know. But I, I really like those guys, and they do, they do really good work. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to shut the power off to the house. And this little piece of paper here is just my notes, so you can take a look at that if you uh, need a reference. Um, I've turned on the floodlights out here. That's sort of my indicator of the power to the house. The last thing I'll say before we get started here is that the generators are helpful, but they don't always produce what experts call clean electricity and by that I mean it's not that perfect sine wave power that you're accustomed to getting in your home. As a result some of your more sensitive electronics can be damaged or altered when the uh, generator cuts on. And So what I've done is I've put all of our sensitive computers, uh, security system, the home entertainment system, all of that now is on a under, under, can't say speak right, uninterrupted power supply, UPS. So even if we were to cut the power off and the generator weren't come on right away, those systems could stay energized for about an hour. The beauty of that UPS system is that it provides that clean power even when the generator is running. So uh, that will uh, be a benefit to you if you have sensitive electronics, you want to keep them functioning as well. So we're going to start this by essentially killing the power. And what we're waiting for is when we kill the power, the generator will, will turn on in about 10 seconds. And to make sure that's not a false alarm, that the power is going to come right back on. If the power doesn't come right back on, the transfer switch, which is right over here, it's in this box with the Generac label. The transfer switch will kick on and the house will come back to life. We'll run it for a few minutes and then we'll move on to the next phase of the test. So here we are at the power switch. I'm going to kill the power. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but the light on the, the, the floodlight is on. So... What we expect to see is for that floodlight to immediately turn off and then as the generator spools up and the transfer switch throws the, the power in the house will come back on. So that should take about 10 seconds. So we're killing the power now. Power is off at the house. We should wait a few seconds. You can hear the generator firing up now. It took less than 10 seconds. The transfer switch, you know, think about it, make sure it's not a false alarm. And then you'll hear it throw and the lights will come back on. Transfer switch is through, lights are back on. And we're going to run this for about five minutes before we do the next part of the test. This is not part of the test, but some of you may find this useful. While the generator is going through its test to make sure that it will stay on and continue the power of the house, and I've just checked the security system, the Wi-Fi system, the computers, everything is up and running, no problems there. So you always want to verify that when the generator is on to make sure you didn't lose any of that. While it's going through those tests, I wanted to show you one of the other features that uh, I had it added to the house when we built it. This is a whole house surge protector. And if you can see the two little green lights, both are on. And I can't hardly see it, but they're both on. Um, kind of bright in here today. Uh, this protects us from large voltage, lightning strikes, those sorts of things. Not only from the power system, but also those power strikes that you get through your uh, internet connection to the street from your ISP, from your internet service provider. So um, these are not that expensive. I think this costs about 150 bucks from Home Depot. 
and if it saves me uh, one or two uh, trips to repairman if the uh, AC compressors get blown out because of a lightning strike then it has served its purpose so uh, these are a great addition to your uh, next part is a trick the guys at Austin Generator taught me we're going to try to fake out the transfer switch by turning the power from the street back on for 10 seconds and then shutting it off. And what we want to see is, does the transfer switch take the bait and think that the power has been restored, or is it going to be more judicious in making that determination? So I'm going to flip the switch, uh, and we're going to count to 10, and I'm going to shut it off. And what I want to see is, I want to make sure that that light, which you probably can't see because it's so bright outside, I want to make sure that light stays on, that the transfer switch doesn't take the bait, thinking that everything has been restored. So we're going to flip this on for 10 seconds. And I've killed the power, and the light outside stayed on the whole time, which means the transfer switch did not take the bait. It decided that the power had not been on long enough for it to shut down. So far the test has gone really well. We're going to shut this down now. I'm going to turn the power back on and we'll see how long it takes for the transfer switch and the generator to recognize that the power is back on full time. Once the generator switch, I'm sorry, the transfer switch cuts us back over to street power, the generator will stay running. It will run for 30, 45 seconds, maybe a minute to cool down and then it will turn itself off. So, house power is back on. Generator continues to run. Transfer switch should kick in here at some point. But it's back on street power. There's the transfer switch. So now the transfer switch has switched us back to street power or utility power, whatever you want to call it. The generator is still running. But it's going to do that to cool itself down, and then it will shut itself off here automatically uh, in a matter of seconds, probably 20 to 30 seconds, maybe up to a minute. But that's how you do this. And uh, if you could do this quarterly, uh, monthly would probably be even better, but quarterly is probably sufficient. Uh, you're doing it more than anybody else. This generator needs to be able to be reliable for you and your family in times of uh, electrical power outages, storms, things like that. So take care of it. If you uh, have one of these, it's good to have a service plan where somebody comes out from the, uh, uh, the dealership or the installer, whoever did your install, and checks on it, checks the oil, checks the filters, runs the diagnostic on it, make sure that uh, everything's working right. And they do these load tests. They want to make sure that uh, the generator is functioning. So I hope this is helpful to you. And uh, if you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the section below. Have a great day.